The topic of this tutorial will be Blackboard Collaborate. The audience for this tutorial is anyone interested in learning to use the webinar software Collaborate. To do this, you will need access to Blackboard through GW as an instructor for a course. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to explain the functions and features of Blackboard Collaborate, and you will also be able to create a new Collaborate session, invite attendees, run a simple session, and share the URL of a recorded session. First, let's go out to Blackboard and I'll show you how to schedule a new Collaborate session. As you can see, I've logged into Blackboard and I'm going to select one of my classes. Now within the class, I can find the Collaborate software either under this Tools link or if I go down to the Course Management section under Course Tools. So let me go to Tools. And here is Blackboard Collaborate, so I'm going to select that. And what I want to do was to create a session or to schedule a session which will occur in the future. So I press Create Session. And the first step is to name the session. So I'm just going to call this Session 1. Second step is setting a start and end time. And this doesn't mean the start and end time of uh, the class itself. It means when will the URL for the session become active? Um, so what I mean is once I've created the session it's going to give me a URL and I'm going to send that URL to my uh, my students and so when the time for our scheduled meeting occurs they click on that URL and they'll enter the session. So the start time indicates when will the URL become an active URL. It doesn't mean when will my class begin. And the end time is Likewise, when does the URL stop being active? So what I typically do is if my class was on Thursday, I'll have the URL become inactive on Friday, just to make sure I have enough time. Uh, the next options that we want to look at um, are under room attributes. So for session type and teleconference, uh, we don't have to worry about those. Under room attributes, there's a number of things, though, that you want to take a look at. One is the recording mode. So what this refers to is it is possible to record your session. So if not all of your students can be there, you can have a recording and then um, the next day or whatever, you can send the URL for that recording and students can watch it on their own time. I typically lead this as manual, which means that when I, as the moderator or the instructor, enter the Collaborate session, I have to turn on the recorder, and when I'm done recording, I turn it off, um, as opposed to automatic, which would mean that uh, as soon as I enter the session, it just starts recording. I actually like to kind of control when it goes on and off, so I go with the manual. Uh, simultaneous talkers, uh, people can have microphones and talk to each other in the session, so this just sets how many people can have a live microphone at the same time. Uh, you don't want it to be too many because then it becomes very difficult to tell who's talking. For private messages, there's also a chat feature within Collaborate that allows students to send messages to you, the instructor, you to send messages to students, students can send messages to each other, or any of you can send a message that can be read by the entire class. Uh, private messages refers to ones which are sent between students. So if you want to be able to see what students are saying to each other, you would select on for view private messages. Um, for all permissions, I usually leave that off. And the permissions that they're referring to are the permission to chat, the permission to use a microphone, the permission to use a camera, the permission to write on the whiteboard within the session. I usually uh, do not give all of those permissions, but I will give whichever permissions are required for what students will need to do as they enter the session. Um, allow in-session invitations, you want to leave that on. 
and let's see, hide names and recordings. So if you're going to be recording a session, if you leave this off, then whatever the names of the students will appear in the participant box in the upper left, and we'll see that in a few minutes. If you select on, what it'll do is it'll change, it'll hide all of their names. So instead of showing the actual students' names, it'll say participant one, participant two, participant three. Um, so those, I'm going to leave that off. So those are the options that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and press save. And here you can see my new session has been created. So if I want to invite people to the session, um, what I'm going to do is press allow guests. And it brings up this menu. And so I'm going to say yes, allow guests. And to invite people, all I would do is cut and paste this URL, this entire URL, and I can send that to my guests via email. Um, so that would be how I would invite people, tell them what time the session is, and say that we're all going to go into that, uh, that as a student they can enter the session through this URL. Uh, important point, though, if you're the instructor, you want to enter through this Blackboard page. You don't want to enter through that URL because that's the URL for students. Uh, what that means is that the students have um, have fewer privileges in terms of um, the things that we were just talking about, starting the recording and that sort of thing. So you as the instructor, you want to enter by clicking on this link right here that will have you enter the session as the instructor. So you can start the recordings, you can give and take away um, uh, uh, abilities for using the microphones and using the chat function and all that. Okay, now that we've looked at how to schedule a new session, let's move on to actually running a live session. Okay, so let's actually go out to uh, the live session. So to do that, and I want again, I want to enter the session as the moderator. I'm going to select this link and then click on Launch Room. And what it does is it downloads this file. So I'm going to say Keep. And then I'm going to, when it's done downloading, go ahead and launch that file, which it opens up with Java. And if you have a problem opening these files, it usually means your version of Java is too old. Um, and in which case it'll ask you to um, update that. So let me go ahead and resize this so that it fits uh, fits in the window. And so the first thing that pops up is this recording reminder. You remember I set the recording status for this session as manual, which means I have to turn it on and off. So it's asking me, do you want to turn it on right now? So I'm just going to go ahead and close that. And when I'm ready to turn it on, and start recording, you know, when the class actually begins, I would press record and say start. Recording started. And you can see this red light up here in the right, upper right, and that will show up on the students' screens so they know that it's being recorded as well. So when I'm ready to complete the recording, I press that again. Recording stopped. And the recording ends there. And we'll take a look later at how you retrieve the recordings later uh, later on. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about uh, once we've kind of settled into the class is audience participation. Um, because that's one of the tricks with online classes, of course, is you don't see the, your students or your participants face to face. Um, so it's hard to tell if everybody's on the same page. Uh, fortunately, Collaborate has a lot of options for that. So one of the simple ones is right up here, these icons. So I could ask everybody in the class, you know, uh, did what I just said make sense? If it did, uh, show me, hit the smiley face. And what you'll see is the smiley face shows up next to the person's name. Or am I going too fast? If so, hit the confused face. And likewise like that. Um, so that's a way to have uh, some nonverbal communication with uh, your students and participants. The other, uh, another way to do that is through chat. So I can click here 
and write a message. And you can see as I, as when I have my cursor in uh, the message bar, and I'm typing, you'll notice that this blue icon shows up next to my name. And if a student starts typing, that icon will show up next to their name. And that's how you know that somebody is actively typing a message. Um, so if you see that icon next to somebody's name, it's usually a good idea to slow down and let the person finish typing. Sometimes people don't, uh, you know, they type slowly. So once I press enter, that icon goes away and my message shows up in the chat box. So another way to uh, communicate, of course, is talking using a microphone. So I can do that if I have a microphone hooked into my computer. Um, I can press talk and you can see this icon shows up next to my name that says my, I, that my microphone is active. Um, sometimes people have difficulty with this. They'll turn on this uh, the talk function and you can't hear them. Usually if that's the case you would send them to the tools menu, audio and audio setup wizard um, and this is a function that Collaborate has to make sure that your microphone and your speakers or, or headset are synced up within Collaborate. So you'll go and you'll select um, you know your input and output, output devices. Um, the next thing that I want to look at are permissions. You'll recall that during uh, the setup I said I said no for all permissions. The permissions are shown right here. So this indicates what permissions I'm allowing students to have. And I set my default as none. So as the moderator or instructor, I have all the permissions automatically. This just indicates what am I allowing students to do. So for instance, if I want all of my students to be able to chat, I'll click here to take the red X off of that. And now all the students can chat. If I want all of my students to be able to write on the whiteboard, which is right here, I'll click the X off of this pencil, and that gives all the students permission to use the whiteboard. If I want to give students the permission to use microphones, click there. So what this means, what this array means, is that when a student enters the session, they will be able to use the microphone, the chat, and the whiteboard, but they will not be able to use a webcam and they will not be able to share their desktop. Um, so I sort of like to have that control over what what students are allowed to do uh, in the session, not giving them more uh, permissions than are needed because sometimes that leads to confusion as people kind of play around with the different buttons. So the next thing that I can do is to uh, load content onto the whiteboard. So it's just this whiteboard. Um, you know, I can turn on a marker and I can draw on the whiteboard. Um, or I can turn on a text box and start uh, typing on the whiteboard. The other thing I can do is to upload PowerPoint slides. So let's do that. To do that I'm going to select uh, load content and it's going to ask me what I want to upload. So I have this PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to press open and it'll take it a few moments here. It's going to open up my PowerPoint slides. Um, it's going to copy them and then paste them here. And So you can see I now have uh, three different pages. I have this whiteboard page and then if I press this arrow, it goes to my first slide. Arrow again goes to my second slide. So it loads each slide individually as a separate page. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you put any kind of animations or sounds in your slide, they will not transfer over. It brings in slides just as static images. Um, and this brings us to the next, uh, next thing that I wanted to discuss, which was polling. So here on one of my slides I've created this question, what's your favorite subject, A through E? Um, and so what I would do is go to Tools, go to Polling, Polling Type, it defaults to Yes, No, I'm going to change it to A through E because that's what my question is. And that shows up right here, so we have the smiley faces here, 
the polling is right here. So you would ask, you would tell the students to uh, click on the or hover over the drop down and then select the answer that that is appropriate for them. And what will happen is next to everybody's name a letter will appear, but you'll also see this box right here that indicates how many A's, B's, C's, D's, and E's. And then what I can do is once I give people time to finish answering, I can go to polling and I can publish the responses to the whiteboard. And it'll create a chart showing me sort of a composite of what the class said. Um, and I just kind of lay that over there. Uh, so this is a way to, to be interactive again. Um, and then when I'm done, I can, if I want to move on to another question, I can clear this and that clears everybody's answer. Um, so the last thing that we're going to look at is if I have recorded a session, how do I share the URL for, recorded, for a recorded session with uh, the people who couldn't make the live session? So let's go take a look at that. So here I've returned back to uh, my Blackboard page and I've clicked under Tools and I'm going to go uh, into Collaborate. In Collaborate, um, what I want to do now is to go to the Recordings part. So the default is to the scheduled or upcoming sessions, but if I click on Recordings, I can see the sessions that have occurred in the past but have been uh, recorded. And what I would do is select the arrow next to it and click on the guest link and all I would do is cut and paste this URL and email that and it will be available to um, anybody who I email that to will be able to see it. It doesn't matter if they're in the class, it doesn't matter if they're in Blackboard, that URL will uh, make the recording available for anyone. All right, now to review, uh, during this tutorial we looked at uh, what some of the main functions and features are of Blackboard Collaborate, and we also looked at creating a session, inviting attendees, running a very simple session, and sharing uh, the URL of a recorded session. Now as I mentioned earlier, in this tutorial we've only scratched the surface of what you can do with Blackboard Collaborate. There's a lot of other features and functions that are available um, and if you would like uh, to talk to somebody about that, if you're interested in doing a session, uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my name is Tom Harrod. Uh, here's my email address, tph at gwu.edu and I'd be happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one session with you to talk about Collaborate. Thank you.